we continue our series, Wisdom for Living in 2021. And I'm excited about Proverbs because it's got a lot in there about parents and how to raise our kids. And uh, how to be dads and moms, and how to be husbands and wives. And uh, the book of Proverbs is one of those amazing books, along with many other parts of the Word of God, uh, that we find wisdom for marriages and for parenting. Uh, and that's so amazing. From the age of five, kids know all about love. <laughs> Sometimes a little earlier than that they do. Just ask them. Listen to these questions asked to five-year-old kids and their cute little answers that they had. How do boys and girls show it? A girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne. And they go out and smell each other was one little girl's response. <laughs> and then here's another one. When you tell a guy you like his shirt, then he wears it every day. <laughs> here's another question asked to these five-year-old kids. How do you know your mom loves your dad? Well, when mommy sees daddy smelly and sweaty, she still says he is handsomer than Robert Redford. <laughs> That's pretty cool, too. And here's another question. When is the best time to fall in love and get married from a five-year-old now? It gives me a headache to think about that stuff. I'm just a kid. I don't need that kind of trouble. <laughs> here's another answer. If falling in love is anything like learning to spell, I don't want to do it. It takes too long. <laughs> Those are cute little answers from five-year-olds uh, about uh, their concept of love. Leave it to the kids to say it like it is, right? Kids, uh, kids do matter, though. Uh, they matter to God. And they matter to you as parents and grandparents, don't they? And as parents, uh, they ought to matter so much to us that we will want to intentionally raise our kids God's way. Intentionally want to do that. So the title of today's message is just that. Raising Kids God's Way. Raising Kids God's Way. Please join me in prayer. Father, please bless the Word of God now, Lord, to our hearts. And God, we thank you that you've given us the greatest manual for marriage and for parenting ever. And it's called the Bible, God's book, the Word of God. And as we look into a portion of your word and a book of your word that has a lot to do with marriage and parenting called the book of Proverbs, book of wisdom for living, wisdom for living as parents and husbands and wives and raising kids God's way. We pray that this will be, uh, Lord, something that we can all learn from and, um, and work at in our homes and in our marriages and in our parenting, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. To help us in this huge task, at, and at times very overwhelming, those of you who are parents, in raising kids, and it does seem overwhelming at times, but let's look at the best place in all the world for the answers and the guidance that God wants to give every parent here today from the Bible, and more particularly from the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. So we're going to look at different passages in the book of Proverbs today to help us in this whole thing of being uh, parents and raising kids God's way. Please understand that what my sharing with you here today is not from a parent who is an expert. I'm far from that. Uh, or a parent who has raised his kids perfectly, not so. Far from that. Um, and preacher's kids. Uh, I was one and, and we've had, I've been a preacher preacher with kids that have been preacher's kids too. Um, and, and preacher's kids, contrary to the opinion of some, are not perfect kids. <laughs> right? They are ordinary kids, just like your kids, with the same sin-bent nature that your kids have, preacher's kids have as well. And they need, like yours, they need some parameters. They need some guidelines. Uh, kids do today, and the parents do as well. Guided by God's word, uh, as your kids do, preacher's kids do as well. So raising kids God's way has got to be the most awesome privilege, but at the same time, the greatest responsibility. And something that is very overwhelming at times for parents today, raising kids today. With that said, please go with me to look at Proverbs there this morning. We have your Bible, and uh, where we find wisdom for living. 
on the subject matter of parenting. So we see raising kids God's way from Proverbs. Best parenting manual in all the world, the Bible, more specifically the book of Proverbs. You want to know how to raise your kids? Study the book of Proverbs. You'll find so much wisdom in raising your kids um, that, uh, that outdo anything else that you might find online or in a bookstore about parenting. It's right here in the Bible, and it is amazing. So here in this book of Proverbs, full of wisdom for living, we learn of four practical guidelines, four practical guidelines needed in this awesome task of parenting and raising kids God's way. We're going to look at two this morning, and then you're going to have to come back, you parents, for Father's Day to look at the other two. We're going to look at four altogether. Uh, so join us on Father's Day for the other two that we'll be looking at from the book of Proverbs. And don't we need wisdom in this whole area of parenting today? We really do. Guideline number one, give kids a godly example. Give kids a godly example. We cannot stress that enough, really. It is so key to parenting today. The Apostle Paul talked about modeling a godly example to others in his letter to young uh, Timothy, his pastor friend, uh, Timothy. And he said this over in 1st uh, 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 and I'm, I'm reading from the New Living uh, Translation uh, today and it says this in 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all the believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. So how then are we to be a godly example to our kids? Well, first of all, first of all, by our words that we speak, by our words spoken, and how important it is to speak the truth versus speaking lies to our kids. Go to Proverbs uh, chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. And uh, let me read here verse 17 of Proverbs 12. An honest witness tells the truth. A false witness tells lies. And verse 19, truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. All the damage that is done by a lying tongue in the home. When I don't keep a promise to my kids, I'm lying. I really am, right? You break a promise, that's a lie. And, and, and don't kids pick up on that really quickly. They really do. They pick up on that. Dad, you said that you're going to take me fishing, and now you can't. This can be very devastating to a child. Here's one that I ask God for grace in a lot. Speaking softly versus loudly. Speaking gently versus harshly to my children and to my wife. Right? Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare, and do they ever. Oh, as fathers, the hurt that can come to our kids and our wives by a loud and harsh and angry tone of voice to them. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to speak softly and gently to those who you love the most, your children and your wife. Speak pleasant words, words that edify rather than unpleasant words, words that tear down. Proverbs 16, 24. Kind words are like honey. How many like honey here this morning besides me? I love honey. You know what? Kind words are just like honey. Like honey on a piece of toast, right? Oh, it's never good. Kind words are good. And they're sweet to the soul. And listen to this. Healthy for the body. You want to have a healthy relationship with your kids and your wife? Show lots of kindness. And speak kind words. Gentle, loving words. 
to them is huge. Secondly, we show a God example to our kids by our conduct or our behavior. We can set a godly example. Note Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 3 and 4. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. So Solomon, in today's terms, is saying, practice what you preach. That's what he's saying here in these verses. What scripture is in your head, live it out in your life. Practice what you preach. Don't just preach something and, and then not live, it, live that out. That's kind of hypocritical, right? Yes. It's just like a dad who smokes and tells his son, don't smoke. That's kind of not practicing what he preaches, right? It's just not just kind of leaping against a, a brick wall, that is. We need to practice what we preach to our kids. And 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, By the way you live. Be an example. Be an example by the way you live, 1 Timothy 4, 12. Someone once said that the devil doesn't care what our convictions are as long as we don't practice them. <laughs> right? Not good, eh? And we can easily become like the psycholo uh, psychology professor, excuse me, who was a bachelor. Whenever he saw a neighbor scolding her child, he would advise, you should love your boy, not punish him. Well, one hot summer afternoon, the pompous professor was patching some holes in his concrete driveway. And tired and thirsty, he put aside his trowel uh, and, and he wiped the sweat from his brow. He started for his house for a glass of lemonade. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a mischievous neighbor boy putting his foot into, guess what? His freshly laid cement. The professor rushed over, grabbed him, and was about to spank the lights out of the daylights out of him when his neighbor hollered, Watch it, professor. Remember, you should love the boy, not punish him. <laughs> and at that point, he yelled back, I do love him in the abstract, but not in the, in the concrete. <laughs> so, by our conduct, our behavior, we uh, set a godly example. Model a life of integrity and honesty in your home. That, that's a prayer that I pray for our sons, and I pray for you dads. Model a life of honesty and integrity and humility before your kids uh, in your home. Proverbs 11. Isn't the book of Proverbs filled with so much wisdom here for parents, right? Proverbs 11, 3 says, Honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 3. Again, practice what you preach is the point here. Christianity in our homes, like kindness, is more caught than taught, right? It's more caught than taught. If my wife and I gladly submit to each other, our kids learn to be submissive as they see it modeled in dad and mom. If I have a passion for God and a passion for God's word, they eventually will too. If they see me on my knees in prayer, or bow my head in prayer a lot, they will pray a lot too. If I skip out on church, they too will skip out on church. If I ask forgiveness when I fail, they'll be more humble and more forgiving. On the other hand, if I'm harsh, our kids will be harsh. If I drive too fast, they'll drive too fast. If I go into porno, porno sites, they'll sneak in some porno looks. If I watch questionable movies, they'll watch questionable movies. If I do a lot of gaming on my device, they'll do a lot of gaming on their device. That's just how it works. They, they practice what you live. Your kids do. They really do. They're little imitators of you. They really are. So thirdly, uh, by our love. 2 Timothy 4.12 says, Be an example to all the believers in your love. In your love. Our love for God. Our love for their mother. Guys. Our 
love for their father, women, and for them, our love for the kid, our kids. And we'll talk more about that in our next point here this morning. Fourthly, we set a godly example by our spirit. By our spirit. That is, by our enthusiasm for God. Enthusiasm is contagious. And we ought to be the most enthusiastic people on planet Earth if we know Jesus. Amen? And that should be contagious with our, ki our kids. Enthused about church. <laughs> Amen? Enthused about worship. Do the kids see us enthused about church? And enthused about worship? And serving God and giving my tithes cheerfully, not grudgingly. Enthusiasm and sharing my faith with others. And then fifthly, by our faith. 1 Timothy 4, 12. Be an example of a believer in your faith. In your faith. Our faith in God and our faithfulness to God. Both are needed to model this faith. Model personal devotions to your kids and your grandkids. Let them see you reading your Bible and praying and model being present in church to your kids and involvement in your church and using your God-given spiritual gifts and modeling, tithing, etc. that show your faith. And then six, set a godly example by our, our purity. Our purity. And this is huge in the day and age where we're living in where there's so much impurity today. On all accounts today, right? First Timothy 4 12 says, Be an example in fill in the blank. Purity. Purity. The word purity is a reference to moral purity. <coughs> Saying no to X rated movies or TV shows that have immoral in innuendos to them. Saying no to any pornography or books or magazines that promote any sex outside the marriage bed of one husband and one wife. Purity is not sexually abusing our kids or other kids. Not flirting with the opposite sex. Not running around with someone else's uh, husband or wife. The Bible calls this sin, by the way, or the sin of adultery, or the sin of fornication. What did young Joseph do? When he was tempted to lie with Potiphar's wife. Did he hang around have tea with her? No. He ran. He took the nearest exit door and was out of there, right? High tailed out of there. I don't know if he had Adidas on or what he had on, but he was quick and moving out of there, wasn't he? He really was. You see, more is taught than taught, right? Yes, the best inheritance a father can leave his children is not lots of investments or lots of money in the bank or material things. You know what it is? It is a godly example. That's the best thing you dads can give to your wives and to your kids is a godly example. Guideline number two, give kids unconditional love. Give kids unconditional love. And this is so needed today, isn't it? And we see this in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and let me read verse 1 and 2. Of Proverbs 4. My children, listen when your father corrects you. Oh, children, listen to dad when he corrects you. Or mom who corrects you. So before, pay attention and learn good judgment. For I am giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my instructions. And then I love verse 3 here. For I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved as my mother's only child. It's one thing to teach our kids good doctrine, and we need to do that. Good biblical values, and we need to do that. But if there's no love shown, no understanding mixed in with it, or too many rules and little love shown or, exp or expressed, our kids will be prone to rebellion. All right? So our, our, our rules, rather, must be tempered with love. They really need to be. Contrary to the opinion of some, this unconditional love does not mean giving them everything. Right? Today, many kids today are, are, are spoiled. When really what they want and what they need is your presence as a dad and as a mom and your time and your attention. Not so much what you buy them, but your presence and your attention given to them. So how then can I give my kids unconditional love? Well, one thing by accepting them for who they are. Every child is created differently. And they, they're created with different personalities, different characteristics, different temperaments, different bents. Uh, and, and, and we need to accept them for who God has created them. Even though they may at times misbehave, don't always act the way I might like them to act. 
I accept them, and I'm training them patiently and lovingly. And then by giving them attention, by giving them attention is another way I show unconditional love, a listening ear to your children and your time setting down your cell phone or your smartphone or whatever device you have and let them tell you about their day and what happened at school or on the ball field or in the gym. Or give up your NASCAR or your ball game or your favorite hobby to take your son or your daughter fishing or play catch with them or soccer or bike ride with them or go for a hike with them in the park or wherever or watch a good family movie with them. And make sure, dads and moms, that you attend their sporting events or their music recitals or their drama club uh, presentation. Whatever extracurricular activities your kids are in, make sure you're there. That is so important. And not just mom, but dad too, right? And then we show unconditional love by giving them hugs. You might have been raised up in a generation, years past, when hugs weren't the thing. It wasn't cool to give your kids hugs. Well, we need to change that. We need to be dads and moms that hug our kids, right? And, 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 and show uh, tenderness that way. Even to your own teenage kids, they need a hug. Two from dad and mom. Bumper sticker that reads, kids needs, need hugs, not drugs. You ever heard that one? Kids need hugs, not drugs, right? I think a lot more hugging would get rid of a lot more drugs, right? I don't mean every, you know, every time you ever see your kids, but at least once or twice a day, guys, right? Give your kids a hug. At least in the morning, or when they go off to bed or whatever. Kids need hugs, and they need that, that physical uh, attention that a dad can give them, especially. And, and a mom, of course, it's more natural for a mom. And uh, usually the kids go to mom, right, when there's, when, there's a, when there's something bothering them, and they want mom's attention. But dads need that to give them that attention, too. I, I think for many kids that get into drugs and promiscuity and that other stuff, and, and other stuff, it's because they're not getting the attention that they need, the love and the affection they need especially from their fathers for one reason or another. And, and that's why you're seeing a lot of kids today that don't have fathers in their home or in their life. And they're struggling with identity. They're struggling with whether they feel loved or not by somebody. And so they're running to these other things and other people to find that love. Uh, and it's so important that dads uh, show that love and affection to their kids, um, especially. Something else, let your kids hear you talk affectionately to your wife or to your husband. Uh, and men, let, let them see you hug your wife, show affection to her. Let them see you buy her that bouquet of flowers for no special occasion. Love your kids by having a date night together. Your kids need to see this. And believe it or not, this all has a way of building security into your kids. They need to see and hear your love for each other expressed rather than fighting each other. You want to create insecurities in your kids? Do a lot of fighting together. Do a lot of arguing together. That will just build, build insecurities in your kids' lives. They need to know, dads and moms, they need to know that dad and mom love each other. They need to know that. They need to see it. They need to hear it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have some insecure kids and kids wondering what their identity is, what being a child is really all about. Our Heavenly Father amazingly demonstrated His unconditional love to us in sacrificing His only Son on a, on a cross called Calvary for undeserving, hell-bound sinners as you and I. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated, or He showed, or He displayed, He proved His love towards us, and that while we get sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, the love of God displayed on the cross for you and me. That's huge. That's the good news of the gospel, is it not? God the Father loves you. He gave His only Son, Jesus, to you. 
and to me unconditionally, no strings attached. He went to that cross because of his love for you and me. And he invites you to come to him and to believe on his son, Jesus, and to come into a relationship with him, a personal relationship with him, with the Savior of the world and the very God who created you. That's pretty amazing, eh? to have a relationship with God who created you. What, what can be that, huh? The, only the world would get that. If they could have a relationship with the very God who created them through faith in His Son, Jesus. You may not have a father, or you may have a father, but that father really isn't involved in your life. And shame on that father if he's not involved in your life. A father who doesn't show you love or spend time with you. And that sadly is the case of many children today. But be assured of this. There is a heavenly father who loves every one of you children and other children today. Even when I mess up as a child. I have a Heavenly Father who's there to love me. Why not reach out today and receive this unconditional love of the Father for you today? And fathers here today, ask God the Father to help you and me demonstrate this unconditional love to all of our kids and our grandkids and guard against favoritism. Oh, that we're very careful of that. To guard against favoritism in our homes and that we shower unconditional love on all of our kids. And you think, well, how can I spread love around all my kids and all my grandkids now? Well, the Holy Spirit will help you. He really will. The Holy Spirit will pour love in your heart for your kids and, uh, and your grandkids as well. Well, as parents, we all feel so inadequate. Do I have a witness? Huh? You ever feel unqualified in raising your kids? Join the club, right? We're all there. We're all there. And yes, we will fail at times in being the parents that we should be. Times when you'll need to tell them, hey, and name your child, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got angry at you. Or I'm sorry I said what I did to you. Will you forgive me? Parents, the kids need to see parents who are transparent. And they're honest when they fail. But whatever the case is, don't give up <laughs> in this most rewarding and most awesome privilege to be a parent, to be a dad, and a mom. And with God's help, and as you pray, and you pray a lot, and you pray together for wisdom, for grace, for patience, and you work with following these guidelines that we've looked here at this morning to where are they here? To give your kids a God example and to give your kids unconditional love. And uh, you do that, uh, you'll be well on your way to raising your kids God's way. So let's believe God for His enablement. To be the parents that God wants you to be, right? In raising your kids and raising them to know and to love and to obey God in their lives, most of all. Let's believe God for that. Will you join me in prayer? Father, <clears throat> we all uh, have those feelings of being overwhelmed at times and feeling inadequate and maybe even sometimes we feel like giving up as a dad or as a mom and Lord these are normal feelings that every dad and mom feels at times in their lives and Lord it's at those times when we need to be driven to the word of God and we need to be driven to seek out answers from the greatest marriage manual, the greatest parenting manual ever, the Bible, and study it and meditate on it and find scripture to help us as parents. And 
Wow, the book of Proverbs gives us lots of that. So Lord, we have, pray that you help us with that. And also, Lord, when we feel overwhelmed and we feel unqualified and just feel like giving up, that we would just get on our knees or find a, a, a chair or seat somewhere where it's quiet and bow our heads in prayer, cry out to you for the wisdom and the mercy and the grace that we need to be the parents that you want us to be, to be the dad, to be the mom that you want us to be. Our greatest help in all the world is the Holy Spirit who will enable us and equip us to be the dads and moms that you want us to be. And Lord, I pray that you help us to model godliness before our kids and help us to show unconditional love to our kids constantly. God, they need that. And Lord, that we again would be totally dependent upon you for the help that we need. So we give you the praise and the glory for that. And Father, for any here this morning who have not experienced the unconditional love of a Heavenly Father, I pray that today would be the day when they cry out to you for mercy and repent of sin and turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he loves them and gave his life for them, and he died in their place for their sins so that they could come into a relationship with the God who created them through your son Jesus. And I pray that right now that they would know that you love them more than anyone. And Lord, that they would reach out and experience your love right now as they put their faith in Jesus Christ for their salvation. God, please do that work to any who are here this morning or any who are watching online today. They would cry out to you for mercy and for salvation. And Lord, then we have the Holy Spirit to help us to be the kind of parents you really want us to be. Father, because without you, God, it is so much more challenging and harder, and we need you to help us in this great responsibility, this great undertaking, yet a great privilege to be a dad and to be a mom. And it is a privilege. It is a blessing. And children are a gift from God. Help us to be reminded of that all the time. They are heritage. They are a gift from God to us as parents. And so help us to that end to parent them the way you want us to parent them. We pray with your help. So we give you the praise and the glory now in Jesus' name. Amen.